too bad. And let's pour some water. There you go. Got a little green tea here. Perhaps I shouldn't advertise the brand, but hey, I've done it for McAfee, why not for tea? And we're ready to dig out the bag. But did I tell you? We can't throw it out. Yep, we're saving the bag. Here we go. Let's save the bag. It's going to go over here. I'll sip my tea and wait till the bag dries. Because I knew I was going to do this, I have many. I used to do workshops, so I collected. Now this one, as you can see, is a, an unused one. Here's a used one, but it doesn't really matter. Because for now, all you're going to know is that I'm going to make a purse and that there are different sizes of tea bags. This particular tea bag, the Lipton tea bag, is the narrow one. I think there are other kinds that are uh, also not as wide, but this one for sure, the, uh, the stash, they are wider, as you can see. This is the Lipton green tea. This is the stash, and all the stash ones seem to be a little wider. And, and so this is this is a dried up one, and that's the ones we're going to use. And also use a round one. I'll show you how to use a round one. Uh, and you can have square ones. Again, the square one gives you um, a limited um, number of things that you can do with it. We're going to make a little satchel type purse. Um, I called it a grandma's purse because it's kind of... Um, Looks like it's been around for a long time. But I made a whole bunch of other purses. So I only have one that I kept for myself and I had to yank it off a little scene that I made. But I'll show you some of the other ones that I made um, with this process. Here's one. Now what I did is I printed these off um, from photos that I had. Just to show you some of the, these are different uh, type of shapes as well as different types of handles. Here's the same one, but what I did was it was a wider one and I didn't bring the flap over as long. I cut the flap. This is one that I didn't put a handle, I put a clasp on. And these clasps are, clasps are available in jewelry findings. Here's one that I did this way and this was using a square one, a square tea bag, like this. This is one using the long tea bag. I'll, I'll post photos afterwards of all of these. Unfortunately, they, they printed really purpley, and that's because I was running out of ink. And this one <clears throat> is um, another of the flap, but I, um, I added a little lace here to give it texture. I don't know if you can actually tell. And this is a little braided um, handle. Here's one done in white or creamy. Here's another one. Again, a little bit of leather, different handle. Uh, this one was using the round one, this one. and this is what I got with it. And I braided this little handle with, with um, some cotton. This one is uh, another long flap. Now you're, you're thinking, well, there's all these different colors. Yeah, well, you're going to see how easy it was to do. And it's all using nail polish. Here's another one, just like the black one, just like this one. Here's one using a round one with a tiny little clasp. Here this one was painted a little um, antique kind of uh, sage green. You can't really tell, I'm sorry, it's, it's bad photos. And this one is a little purpley one. And what I did for the club is I made up these little kits. Tea bag purse by Bow Minis. There you go. Add the tea bag, add the handle, the little rings. And I'm also going to show you how to make the rings if you don't want to go out and buy some rings. And all of the instructions on how to make the purse. So we're going to go through the little kit and I'll show you exactly what we've done. So I was fiddling one day with a dry tea bag on my plate and started to look at it. And there it is. I thought, hmm, certainly looks like a little, little purse. It has the little folds. And you can do another fold on the bottom. 
Now the fold here, but it is paper, so you need to deal with that. With that. Now this one, I didn't show the folds on the bottom. I just left round, um, but there are um, some of the other ones I did. I did show the folds on the bottom. So for this one, I'm just going to use the exact size of the tea bag, and we're going to have to take out you now um, the little string and. You can use the little staple that they have here as part of the decoration on the tea bag. Pull this apart, and there you have the little, um, almost like a little closure. So you can use that, and um, this is the the other side of it. So obviously you're going to put that on the underneath, and it's going to be flipped over like that, and you're going to have your little purse. Um, so I'm going to use this one exactly um, as you get it. Another one, if you get your tea bags, if they're the wide ones, um, what I've done is I've opened it all up and I folded it in. So now it's not as wide and I've gathered the tea. It's also nice when you're working with this that you're smelling some nice tea. I've gathered the tea equally on both sides and I'm going to fold and fold that and that will be your flap and this side you're simply going to move it in go for half and then use the little flap so now you have one that's substantially um, narrower or not as wide and smaller. You can also do um, the corners. You can play with the corners a little bit. You can do that like this. Fold, fold, fold onto itself a little bit and there you go. So now you have a different type of flap on the purse. You'd be a little bit more careful, obviously, because you'll have time. Use my handy um, pin there. Uh, this one I'm going to also pin it down for now. Um, to make the the round one, using the round tea bag. Here's what I've done: one using the round tea bag. And I've used a ring, so there you go. I gathered all the tea into the middle, gathered it all up to the size that I wanted, and folded that in, or you can play with it as well. And then feed that through. That becomes your handle, and you're going to be making a nice, round, fancy purse. I'm going to put pin this one down as well. So there's four of them that you can work on. Shapes are endless and the decorations are endless as to what you can do. The instructions that I wrote up, I'll put a link to it, to the instructions. Um, very simple. All that you need is your tea bag. Um, some items uh, that you will need Four tools will be a pair of scissors, maybe something to poke out the um, staple, uh, or even the tip of your scissors will do. Um, I used these little guys for the closure. Put it on top. And these type of rings for the handles. Now the rings can be big. They can be small, they can be dark, they can be lighter. Um, as far as the handles, this little, this little handle here, um, it's just these little um, uh, rings that I had from jewelry findings. But here, you know, sometimes our earrings, uh, we miss one or two, 
And here are some from just junk uh, earrings that I've accumulated. I hate to say this, but thrift store is great for jewelry for stuff. They have bags and bags of jewelry that only have one of, and I've accumulated over the years, but please don't go out and buy it. Don't do um, what I've done where you end up with enormous amount jewelry tidbits. Sometimes they're quite nice. Um, you find um, things that you can use in projects, but here's more that you can use as handles. Um, there's a very fancy one here. This just gives you ideas as to what you can find. Now this would be a nice little closure. Uh, I'm going to show you some that I have. A little butterfly closure. Wouldn't that be pretty? I have uh, set aside a few to show you. Um, another little one that you can use as a closure. Uh, and by that I mean you can put that on here like that with perhaps one of those little seed beads on. Um, and here's another one. That would be a very fancy purse. I've saved um, little chains, little bits of jewelry chains. Um, here's another kind, slightly bigger. Um, here's something else that you could use for, clo for a closure on the bag. Put that on there. How's that? I don't know if you could see that. You see that? Like this, if you put one of those. Now, just is imagining that you're putting it on a already finished purse. To make some rings, one size, here's another size, and another size. Kind of about the same size, but anyway, the thickness is what makes it look like it's a different size. To make them, this is just a piece of dowel, wooden dowel, or Here's another another size, but a toothpick or maybe a pen. Uh, this one is actually a pen that I I um, got the top bit of it. And so let's use a wood doll, piece of wire, um, different kind of wire. Here's a very thin wire um, in that I had in a roll. So to do the thin one, you just just gonna hold on to it. And you start very tightly around. Now here, every time you go around once, you get a ring. So you obviously don't need to make many rings. See this one spirals out into a bigger ring. Because that's just the type of wire it is. But you see this one? That was done with different wire. This one, let's see how this one acts. I'm going to put this one around. Some will keep its shape, some will sp spring out. And of course you can use springs from inside a pen. And let it go. So now you have a whole bunch here. See this one stays in place. And this one will also stay in place. And this is a pretty one. You can get this in jewelry department all these uh, fancy wires, but um, you can also take little bits of household wire that you happen to have around from an old lamp or whatever, and you'll have wire inside. This is a pretty one. You'll need your wire cutter. Start it off. And you will cut one full, I don't know if you can see, one full ring out. You might have to pop it out like that. And here it is. Now once you have that, you will need to close it up. I'll get a little guy. You need to close it up or flatten it out like that. One. Let's say this one here. I'm going to use a different kind. Okay. And here's another one. And again, you'll need to close them up, but that's how you do it. 
paint the purses. This one was done with um, black nail polish. You can also use, instead of nail polish, you can use acrylics, but then you have to seal it and seal it before and after. But let's talk about the nail polish. Now this is a matte nail polish. This is actually a blue a dollar. No, actually this is a euro. I got it when I was in Europe. And um, it'll come out matte, similar to the color on this purse. Um, and then if you want it shiny, shiny leather, then you can just put a coat of clear nail polish on it. Fancy colors, and you have the reds. Um, anything will do. If you prefer a gold, gold purse, pretty yellowish type nail polish. If you've been doing minis for a while, you'll know that you can use nail polish a lot in when we paint. I also included in the kit a little bit of, um, this is a little bit of paper we can use as the handle. Uh, so instead of a metal handle, you can use the paper painted the same color or a contrasting color. Oh, so here's just a little bit. This is quilling paper because it happens to be uh, already nice and cut. Um, photo paper is quite nice because when you paint it, it, um, it also shapes nicely. But if you're going to use um, acrylic, this won't hold as nicely. Um, if you use nail polish, then it will hold uh, its shape, shape and it will also um, thicken up as you layer the coats of paint. The one that I'm going to do first um, is going to be the one that resembles this one. So I'm going to show you how I got from here to there. Generous amount of glue. For spreading here, it's best that you have a brush that you use for glue and then put it into water. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to seal it all with the glue. You might want to water it down for easier to spread, but I prefer to just do it full strength and just be patient with it afterwards and wait till it dries. This is what's going to give the purse the character of the leather. Okay, and go in the back. Should you want to just use um, acrylic paint instead of nail polish, doing this step is quite important because the acrylic paint will be too watery and then it will um, break down the, the paper bag. And once we do that, we're going to have to let it dry a tiny bit. Right now it's all very smooth. Now if you want, if you want um, to dry this a little faster, by all means take your blow dryer. But I'm just going to set it aside for now. In the meantime, I've decided that that I'm going to um, use um, like a leather um, strap instead of a chain strap, just like on this one. So I cut a bit of this is photo paper and I'm going to use the matte um, black on here. And generously painted, painted on both sides. Give it a generous amount. It's a little shaky on there. If you just tap, tap, tap as it dries, it'll look like it's got a little bit of texture. See, I could have used the nail polish right on the bag, but I'm showing you, in case you don't have nail polish the color that you want, I'm showing how to do it as if you were going to use the um, acrylic paint. So you see that? That's got, it's gonna have a little bit of texture. Remember this one, I shaped it, but what I don't like is that I have too much of a flange here so I'm going to cut a little bit around and I'm going to use the round handle. Glue this flap down. Don't want all of that here. Glue it down. Like that and like so. 
think I shall do this one. Maybe a brown. Here's a pretty brown. Okay, so this one is going to be easy to do. There's a handle on the bag. I'm going to do it using this nice little kind of leathery looking brown. This is the one that we folded up. Or cut, also cut these. Cut them to the size that you want for your flap. Hope you can still see what I'm doing. Okay, and that's going to go here. Now there is a nice little size purse. Our glue. Seal that in. Fill that in like that. This one here. Ah, there you go. Obviously, this one's going to need more than one coat. I'm going to go right over it. The one that I just did it dries fast because it's nail polish. I'm doing this. I'm actually shaping or forming some ridges in the bag so as to give you the feel of a well-used leather bag. I'm going to paint the rest of this off and show you the finished product before adding the handle. It's one. And now this one, we're going to finish this one off. So what I have done, <clears throat> I've again, this one only has the glue so far, and I've smooshed some ridges into place. I'm going to leave the nice flap on it, and here it is just with the glue so it's fairly transparent this one we will need to do a dark color black I'm going to take one of these, put it in like that. Okay, so I'm going to put this on here, just slightly touching it so it looks convincing. Let's put a finish on this little guy. There's an 
it is all painted up and I think on this one I will use a chain this chain right there at this stage I've already it's pretty hard and I've already um, done all this smooshing and shaping that I want and put all the ridges that I want so now I'm going to put a little indent here and a little indent on the other side I think that's about right so now I'll get some glue out I'm going to put oh, put it in there and then turn it to the other side and put it into the other hole like that it'll chain pretty soon it'll be dry I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you again.